Well, we're doing Unit 1D. First question. We've got to decide whether the statement makes sense. <clears throat> the argument is weak, so its conclusion must be false. Well, no, it doesn't make sense. Let me give you an example. The Earth revolves around the Sun because I said so. The, uh, the argument is weak, but the conclusion is true. The conclusion is that the uh, uh, Earth does revolve around the Sun. Uh, number two, every coach must know his sport well. Steve Spurrier is a football coach, so Steve Spurrier knows football well. Now, this is a deductive argument because we went from general football coach to specific knows football well. <clears throat> so that's A. For three, determine the truth of the premise, discuss the strength of the argument, and assess the truth of the conclusion. So, uh, baseball, football, basketball, golf, hockey, and tennis are all played with a ball. Well, that is uh, uh, not true. Conclusion, all sports are played with a ball. And that's not true, so the conclusion is false and the argument is weak. Hockey is not played with a ball, it's played with a puck. Uh, let's draw a Venn diagram to determine whether the argument is valid. Okay, so it says that, and this is number four, you have it on your sheet. And all lawyers wear suits. Okay, so we have suit wearers, and among those suit wearers, so suits, and we have lawyers, and uh, Jack wears a suit. So here's Jack. And uh, then uh, conclusion, Jack is a lawyer. Well, Jack may be a lawyer, but maybe uh, Jack is something other than a lawyer. He's on the fringe here. So uh, we have an invalid situation. The conclusion does not follow necessarily from the premise. Identify the type of argument determine and determine its validity with a Venn diagram. Okay, if you break a uh, curfew, then you will be punished. Uh, further premise, Thelma was punished, so the conclusion, Thelma broke the curfew. Well, let's do a Venn diagram of that. So, so here we have punished. And uh, uh, if you break curfew, then you will be punished. Thelma was punished. Thelma broke curfew. Well, one of the reasons for breaking curfew, uh, being for being punished, is breaking curfew. Now, Thelma was punished. Well, here's Thelma. She may or may not, she's right on the fringe here, she may have broke curfew, maybe she didn't, so we have an invalid situation. Uh, yes. Let's go to the next one. Evaluate the validity of the chain of conditionals. If I take, well, I'm going to do this with a diagram again. So if I take a shower, I use soap. Okay, so here we are, shower, SH. And among other things I do with the shower, in the shower, I use soap. So we scrub and, you know, use the washcloth and so on. But anyhow, we're going to use soap, S for soap. 
And if I use soap, then we get dry skin. So uh, the conclusion is, um, if I take a shower, my skin becomes dry. Well, notice it. it uh, dry skin is a subset of taking a shower. So uh, we've got a valid situation here. B for valid. Okay. Now let's do the last uh, two. Create a simple three-line argument for the given form. Choose your examples so that it illustrates clearly whether or not the argument is valid. Uh, firming the hypothesis. By the way, it's essential you realize this. You must go to the notes for C, and this is the part we're dealing with at the moment, and all of this information is covered in C in the book, or if you go to the notes that I've provided, you'll also find the same information uh, covered. So we're talking about affirming the hypothesis. Well, if we affirm the hypothesis, then P is true. If P, then Q. P is true. Q is true. And so we're valid. And that's a conditional proposition. On the other hand, if we affirm the conclusion, if P, then Q, then Q is true. And our conclusion is P is true. Well, that's invalid. All we did, this corresponds to the converse. And because the result is true, doesn't the conclusion is true, doesn't mean that the uh, premise was true. So that took care of 7 and 8. Now let's go to 9. <clears throat> the premise, if you love me, then you would buy me a car. Okay. Okay, so we've got love here. And among those other things that come with love is a new car. Oh. And let's see. If you wanted me to be happy, you would buy me a new car. So. We wish happiness, happiness. And when you wish happiness, among other things you wish for that person is a new car. So the conclusion is, if you love me, then you would want me to be happy. Well, uh, happiness doesn't follow logically, at least in terms of this diagram, from uh, love. Uh, the new car does, but not lo not happiness. So we've got an uh, invalid situation, B, invalid. And uh, it's invalid because there's no clear chain to R. See, P and Q, P implies Q, uh, P is if you love me then you'd want me to have a new car. R is if you wanted me to be happy, then Q, you'd want me to have a new car. You'd get me a new car. But there's no flow from P to R, so invalid. Uh, number 10, draw a Venn diagram to determine whether the argument is valid. Okay, so all snakes have fangs. So, among all the creatures with fangs, there are snakes. Ooh. And so, all snakes have fangs. So, uh, Terry's pet does not have fangs. So, these are fanged animals. This pet's out here. It doesn't have have a uh, fangs, thank, thank, thankfully. Uh, Terry's pet is not a snake. Well, I would say we've got a valid situation here. The uh, All snakes have fangs, and this creature doesn't have a fang, so clearly it's not a snake. So we're talking valid. Yeah. 
Now determine the truth of the premises, discuss the strength of the argument, and assess the truth of the conclusion. Well, the premises are all true. 4 plus 15 is uh, 19. 18 plus 5 is 23. 36 plus 33 is 69. The conclusion, whenever we add even and odd and an odd number, the result is an odd number. So the premises are true, the argument is strong, and the uh, conclusion then is probably true. This is inductive. We're going to from specific to general, so the best we can say is it's probably true. Premise. I get lower grades than my friend in math, chemistry, and English. Conclusion. My friend is smarter than me. Well, uh, it's a weak argument, and uh, uh, it's probably, it's not necessarily true. Here's why. You might be quite, you might get far better grades in other areas than math, chemistry, and English, better grades than your friends in other areas. So we're not going to use your evidence to determine how smart you are. Number 13, decide whether the argument is inductive or deductive. 23 plus 31 is 54, and so on. Therefore, the sum of two prime numbers is even. It's going from specific to general, so it's inductive. Finally, uh, decide whether the statement makes sense. Your argument is sound, but it's invalid. Well, the truth is, an argument is sound if it is valid and its premises are true. So, no, this doesn't make sense, and we're done.